Hello, my name is uh, John Dobbin. I've, uh, I'm a director in Shakely Rearchitects in Dublin. I've been asked to make a very short presentation on some work we've been doing in the arena of uh, low-rise high-density housing uh, recently. Uh, we don't need to restate the blindingly obvious. We have a major problem in this country with delivering housing at a cost that can actually be borne by the consumer. And we tend to think of ourselves as quite unique in this situation, but in reality, uh, Ireland, more specifically Dublin, has a housing crisis about once every 30 years, pretty reliably. And a lot of those issues revolve around the issue of density and getting appropriate density. And now, what in, is density? This is a much hackneyed slide, but uh, useful to demonstrate that uh, from the left to the right, high rise does not necessarily always equal high density, high quality housing. Uh, these three examples being exactly the same. And just to give a, us a picture in our head, maybe for people who are unfamiliar with it, um, a lower density, you know, suburban development, 30 units per hectare, somewhere like Dundrum or Churchtown, looking a bit like this. 55 units per hectare, getting a bit more dense into somewhere like Rathmines. Um, a higher density, about 85 units per hectare, uh, again in Dundrum, a recent apartment development that's very uh, demonstrative of its type. Um, and all the way up to an incredible development, the, the Kevin Street Ivy Trust buildings with 320 units per hectare, incredibly dense. Uh, the Victorians and Edwardians really knew what they were doing. Uh, that's as dense as parts of Hong Kong, which is kind of shocking and interesting all at the same time. Um, so increasing density is a very, very good idea. It, it improves uh, viability uh, so long as we're producing really quality housing. Uh, in the context of Dublin, there's lots of brownfield sites, but these sites are often quite small and very limiting in terms of what you can deliver, often limited to two or three uh, stories. Um, and cost and viability issues make basement car parking and, and other things like that uh, unachievable and just uh, non-viable to deliver. So while our development policy supports higher density, the actual reality of sites on the ground and, and other factors like that doesn't really support it. Now, if you're looking at a traditional apartment development model, you might have a, a relatively small uh, a density, probably 80 units to hectare, something like that, quite an inefficient layout in a, in a landscape space. And the development type is quite out of context. So we want to develop a type of housing that is quite different where we're getting a very high number of units, maybe 100 to 140 units to hectare, always be less than three storey, um, delivering the same uh, number of units as an apartment scheme, but doing it at a very much reduced cost. And this is how you do it too. Uh, what we developed is a duplex maisonette, very much based on Victorian ideas about housing, where you have a ground floor one or, or two bedroom apartment uh, garden flat and a two bedroom duplex maisonette above it. But we've designed out overlooking to the rear to these units, which is the reason why we can achieve much, much higher densities than you would be able to uh, in a traditional uh, 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 higher density format. And the reason for doing it really is they make fantastic places to live, full of light with great access to really quality outdoor um, private space. And if you compare it to uh, an apartment development at the top and our model at the bottom, you've got the same number of units, but we've just designed out the cost and complexity of all of those stairs and lifts and common services. Uh, this form of development is being done around the world. Peter Barber, particularly in London, is dealing with the same issues uh, uh, in the social affordable sector and is doing some amazing work with these ideas. Uh, and people say it's a bit radical, but really lots of our really great housing, like in Rathgar and Rathmines is like this, a, a ground level uh, apartment, garden flat, and an upper level duplex maisonette. And where does this kind of housing, where does it feel like? Well, we, we think it feels like Stony Batter, um, uh, you know, very much an outdoor based housing, uh, which is very high density. We looked at an example site, which is a site in Cabra, I've now being delivered. This was an original apartment development scheme on it. And we put our model onto it and developing uh, uh, depending on the exact mix of units, you could have the same number of units as the apartment scheme, or you're even up to 50 more. And very much based on sort of old fashioned or other ideas from the Victorian city about streets, squares, shared surfaces, and really high density, but very low rise housing. And this is just an impression about how some of that might look and feel with small public squares and uh, owned or housing on the street, but developed at a density which is really equivalent to uh, uh, comparable apartment schemes. Uh, we published our findings on this about a year and a bit ago, and we were delighted when it kind of developed a little kind of flurry of, of commentary, which led to the Business Post publishing it. And I should say that we're now well into construction um, on our first scheme of this type, which is uh, in Dublin. And we're also involved in a number of social affordable housing schemes where 
uh, going into the planning stages where um, we're using exactly this typology. And that's my final. So thank you very much.